construction method and operation we have nine methods first we have to clear the site locating the structure earth moving stabilizing earth and structure setting foundation building superstructure seven is installing the utilities eight and closing frame is superstructures and nine finishing the project under clearing off-site we have six ways the most the most common site clearing practices are demolishing salvaging cutting burning earth moving and disposing when we say demolishing it means destroying if we demolish by using high explosives we call this operation blasting when bulldozers uh, or wrecking balls are used this is called wrecking. Salvaging uh, means saving things from being demolished or destroyed. This is called salvaging. This can be done by tearing down or taking apart or removing the wanted material from the site. When a building is to be demolished, most electrical switchboards, plumbing fixtures, electrical fixtures, and windows and also door, doors and windows are salvaged. Next, we have the cutting. Cutting has many uses in wooded areas. Cutting means bringing down timber by using access, explosives, or saws. Cutting also can be done with torch to cut through pieces of metal or steel. When wood cannot be used or vegetation has to be cleared, one of the ways of destroying is by burning. This can be done by setting a fire under controlled conditions. After the fire has burned everything, uh, bulldozers are used to clean up the site. Next, we have earth moving. Earth moving is used in clearing many sites. In addition, earth moving may be uh, it can be a major part of the construction work on heavy construction projects such as uh, highways, tunnels, and earth and dams. Disposing means removing the site materials that are not wanted. Disposing may be done by burying, burning, or hauling away. Next, we have a special case special solutions for special problems we have the following examples which could give you a better understanding of many things involved in preparing and clearing the site for example the instance of uh, building a dam the flow of the river must be changed or this is called this is so called the channeling uh, second we have a structure being moved from its old site to a new site uh, thirdly, a helicopter can be used also to transport sections of a metal tower to a site that is hard, hard top to reach. And number four, we have here a cover dam. A cover dam is used to keep water from the construction site. Locating the structure, we have surveying for highways and surveying for buildings. The surveyor is the man with the training and equipment needed to do this job. Through his training and experience and with the help of measuring equipment or let's say the transit or total station, he can take dimensions from a set of plans and mark on the site. In surveying for highways, the first and most important part of laying out a highway is to find the correct direction. The surveyor does this by finding existing highways, trees, and survey stakes which are already set, or other landmarks on the plans. The plans show the exact location of the highway to be built in relation to these landmarks or features. Once the surveyor has found these features, he uses them along with the transit and measuring tape. He uses them... Uh, to find the center line of the proposed highway. When surveying for buildings, building plans generally show where the building will be in relation to the property line or some other feature. After the surveyor has marked 
when where the structure is to be on site he uses these markings to set control points and these points from which to measure both horizontal and vertical distances the actual layout of the building is done by using butter boards these are made of either 2 by 3 or 2 by 4 2 by 4 stakes uh, driven part away or spaced into the ground a board is fastened to the tops of these stakes then a nail is driven into the edge of this board or a saw cut is made on the line that is being laid out number three we have earth moving there are many kinds of earth moving equipment like for transportation transferring dumping disposing and excavating included here is the setting up for the convenience of the equipment to be used before the equipment gets to the site the contractor decides how he will use the machinery all need the drums uh, mats which give support on soft soil assembly areas and parking aprons these are used for servicing and storage excavating materials are also called spoil These are transferred or moved from one place to another. Then, they are disposed. The spoil may be stored for reuse on the site for possible sale and later use on other sites um, like for fill materials. Spoils can, may, uh, spoils can also be disposed of by using it or again filling or top surfacing. Next, we have transferring and disposing. On some construction sites, spoils may only be pushed or moved out of the way of the workers. This is done when the materials are to, to be used or uh, again utilized on the site or when it is to be sold, dumped, or spread. A contractor will sometimes have the spoil arranged in mounds, slopes, or hills around the construction site. A spoil may also be used to fill old gravel pits, washed out trenches in the land, and other holes. Under excavating, we have seven classifications which are the following. We have the bulk pit excavating, the bulk white excavating, the loose bulk excavating, limited area vertical excavating we have also trenching then dredging and tunneling the difference between trenching and dredging in trenching the excavation is long and narrow the trench must be wide enough so that the conduit pipes and other underground materials can be placed on it how about dredging this kind of excavation deals with Removal of soil or other materials used or other materials that are present underwater. It is much the same as loose bulk excavating too. For example, uh, this practice might be used in making uh, harbors or river channels, deep river channels. Tunneling is not usually considered under the heading of general excavation but because it is done completely underground. Next, we have stabilizing earth and structure. We have five main ways of stabilizing earthworks that is compacting, sheathing, bracing, and shoring. Four is, fourth is piling, and fifth is cover damming. For compaction or compacting, it is the comp compressing or packing down of earth to make it firm and to avoid also the voids next we have sheathing for sheathing forms walls to keep earth out of excavated area common sheathing materials are metal panels and wood planks or wood panels these are supported by bracing and shoring 
Speaking of bracing and shoring, these are processes usually used with sheathing. Brace is put in horizontally between the sheathing panels used in narrow excavation. Shoring is placed diagonally against the excavation walls or sheathing panels. This is used in wider excavation. It is held by stakes at the bottom. Next, we have piling. Uh, large concrete, steel, or wooden stakes are driven into the ground to give more stability to a structure. We have two main purposes of piling. It is to improve the load-bearing and capacity of earth and to help against an even settlement of the structure. There are also two kinds of piles. We have friction piles and end or point support piles or it's called and bearing piles too. Friction piles, this support a load by the friction developed between the surfaces of the pile and, and the soil through which it is driven. While and bearing pile or port point support piles, this supports the load by having the other end rest on a firm layer of rock or earth below the ground. We have different we have different types of piles. It could be made of concrete, it could be made of steel, then timber, H steel or steel H. We have also precast and the other one is composite. If we say composite, it means combination of um, concrete at the top below is still next we have cover damming it is a popular method used in construction when a structure must be built in water filled soil it is used to make a dry working area and to keep water out of an area where concrete must be placed and cured next we have setting the foundation. We have three parts, the bearing surface, the footing, and the upright supports there. A foundation is the element of an architectural structure or structure, structural element which connects it to the ground and transfers loads from the structure to the ground. Foundations are generally considered either shallow or deep. Foundation engineering is the application of soil mechanics and rock mechanics. When we say rock mechanics, it is geotechnical engineering. We have parts of foundation. As I mentioned earlier, we have the bearing surface or the part of earth on which the foundation will rest. We also have the footing, the flat part of the foundation which spreads the load of the structure above it and number three we have the upright supports such as walls columns um piers we also have the upright supports upright supports means these are the elements that rise above the footing to form the rest or or the substructure how do we set foundation? The bearing surface is first prepared to support the footing. When the bearing surface has been prepared, the footing can be placed since most of footings are made of concrete. Let us see how they are made. Concrete footings are made in six steps. First, we have the forms or molds which are set in place, but this could be optional depending on your excavation site or excavation area the next is steelman or the road the rod setters this uh, they place the steel reinforcement in the forms where it is needed the next a mixer operator puts materials into the drum and mixes them to make concrete then fourth concrete laborers and cement finisher finishers they, they place the concrete in the form the cement finishers compact the concrete in the form and finish the surface of the concrete. How do they do that? They use concrete vibrator. Then next, after the concrete has set, the laborers remove the formworks or it is called stripping. 
Sixth is building the superstructure. We have three different kinds. The mass structure, the bearing wall structure, and the frame structure. When we say mass, these are made of large bodies of materials which generally cover large areas. Example of uh, mass structures, we have uh, earth or concrete dams and cast-in-place concrete retaining walls. Mass structures may have a very little or no open space inside the mass of materials. While we say, if we say bearing wall, bearing wall structures are made of masonry or other materials and usually built as walls or walls and roofs. Bearing wall superstructures enclose a space. They are usually thick and made of load-bearing blocks. Next, we have the frame superstructures, which are which is common to us. Frame superstructures are those such as houses, which are built with a frame. The frame is like a skeleton. The parts serve the same purpose as to the bones in your body. Frame superstructures may be made of steel, reinforced concrete, or also wood. The members of a frame are columns, po or post, with beams and connecting one to another. Utilities or installation of utilities. Utilities are services such as water, waste disposal, gas, communication lines, electricity. These utilities need to be installed in many structures in order to in order for them to serve the purpose for which they were constructed. In describing utilities, we shall assume that we have a building provided with the following basic utilities. We have water, water disposal system, electricity for lighting and air conditioning, gas to heat up the building and to heat water. We also have communication lines for telephone service, internet, TV cable services, and etc. These are utilities. The equipment, supplies, and labor for these utilities may be from one-third or two-thirds of the entire cost of a building. Thus, or therefore, the architect or engineer designing the uti utility system has a job almost as big as the task of designing the rest of the structure. Next, we have some kinds of structures for enclosing the frame, for enclosing our frame structure or frame superstructure. Some kinds of structures are usually left uncovered. What are the examples? We have the bridges, the roads, dams, and also towers, which are used for utility. Next, we have the buildings. Most buildings and some towers are wholly or partly enclosed. It refers chiefly to buildings which have a framed or skeleton type of superstructures. These structures needed to be enclosed. Uh -huh. Last, we have to finish the project. So, what was that? Finish work is necessary to prepare a structure for occupancy or use. It can be divided into four parts. We have trimming, painting, and decorating. Number three is installing the accessories or the fixtures. If we say fixtures, fixtures for plumbing, electrical, sanitary. Our fixture here for our first photo or picture. We have the shower enclosure, the shower head and valve, the bathtub. We have the faucet, the floor drains. Next one here, we have also the fixtures, doors and windows, electrical fixtures, such as the pendant lights. Then, it must be, the tiles must be also polished. The area must be cleaned. The painting must be fully painted. And decorated and number three we have to 
pick up or um, fix the extra scaffolds or temporary structures that which surrounds our finished area. The last phase of completing the site is clean up. This includes removal of temporary structures and equipment, collecting and disposing of trash and debris, and also removal of all equipments and surplus materials from the site. As finished work will be visible, it must be done skillfully and carefully before turning it over to our client.